found that in the world of art, and certainly in Native American art, that there is a uh, danger of becoming repetitive and having a style of work that's recognizable and palatable by many, and you end up sort of doing the repetition to sort of feed the myth of who you are and people have an expectation. It's more important for me, again, to be, to be the music maker and direct you know, my collectors and my clients to, to look at the possibilities and the potential for art to be something different and reinterpret it uh, by the same artist and not feel that they have to you know, have the same bowl of soup every day. I continue doing what I do as an artist and experimenting and working on uh, you know, reinventing imagery and, and experimenting with different techniques and also uh, mediums. So I moved into jewelry recently and that's been challenging and I've had to scale back translating imagery into three-dimensional forms. What I began working with early on was a lot of very brightly colored textural paintings, which I call my traditional works. And those paintings usually reference a lot of uh, Native American iconography, religious, uh, spiritual figures. They have a certain kind of rhythm to the way that I paint them. They're very meditative. And they also were the very beginning and the catalyst for how I was to later develop into some different directions. I started incorporating sand into the oil paintings to build up the surface and the texture. So a lot of those paintings employ a lot of physicality and they have an immense amount of rich textures. And um, th that, that sort of got me into thinking about creating sculptural works. And so I started developing <coughs> a lot of the paintings into more sculptural things. I diversified from there, responding to the landscape as I moved to Taos, New Mexico, and I started doing much more modernist landscapes, and so those are the really big stormy skies, uh, a sense of that marriage between the earth and the sky, and the plants and the hills, and it's really one of the great parts of living in New Mexico is watching cloud formations move in, and you know, the way the water runs through the rivers, and bright colored chemisa. So I responded to that and worked on a whole series of, of uh, black modernist landscapes. I also then put on the different hat and then I'm working abstractly. So I'm working on large scale black and white works which are very um, botanical in nature. They're also biomechanical. They have um, character shapes, forms that express a different side of how I think and much more based in the subconscious realm and then they have a sense that they are part of this world but, but, but maybe things that we can't see. Those have now translated into color paintings. Then I moved on to jewelry. So the diversifications just seem to happen through the chain of events. It wasn't that I planned with any real conviction that I needed something different. They just sort of occurred at the right time followed the lead. Many artists have a very direct train of thought with a linear progression and I jump around and I, I'm comfortable with that. I, I like how that's allowed me to be three artists simultaneously and express myself in a way that I, I wouldn't be able to if I had just stuck with one thing in one image. I'm Tony Aveda and um, I'm a practicing painter who dabbles in jewelry.